It's finally here, my computer chair, and I'm gonna show you how to build it. Stay tuned. Quantum Nerd here. About 10 years ago, I bought a computer chair that was uh, very nice, very flashy looking, but unfortunately, it's time to go. Uh, so what's been happening is the, the back of the chair has been breaking and leaning back, so I can't readjust it to the forward position. And when I'm playing games, I'm just pretty much, yeah, um, reclining all the time, which isn't intuitive to what I'm trying to accomplish when I'm gaming or editing, so. I mean, yeah, it would be kind of a relaxing thing to just lay back and relax, but it's not good in the lumbar when you're trying to um, sit for a long period of time. So what I have here is the car axis, car axis, if I'm actually pronouncing it right, backwards for me, car axis, yeah. So I'm not sure about the actual pronunciation of this, but I'm sure it'll definitely feel a lot more comfortable. So it says right here not to use a box cutter, but I indeed do have a box cutter. I don't have anything to really cut it open with. I'm not gonna use a keychain. It's got tape all around, so I'm gonna be very careful. <laughs> Mission accomplished. My first impression, not packed very well, but I'm sure it survived. It survived the trip, okay, it looks like. Thought that was one piece. They feel like they're hooked on. <laughs> oh man, it's like stuck in there. Just gonna do the old rollout, I guess. Their divider. Get a little, little oof there. <laughs> That's the back, the back of the chair. My surmise, this is the, the posterior piece for your bootay. So this is the Carax computer chair black edition, so I, could, I mean, they had all, they had a gray and black. I don't think, I think actually, I think that's only two colors that were on there. I'll put a little picture on the screen there to show you what options they had. And so nice little bubble wrap. There's the armrest. It's a pretty simple, um, you know, just very few pieces really. Shouldn't take a whole lot of time. Be yeah, a very short video, actually. We got our parts and screws. See that right there. Got our caster wheels in there as well. Right there. Of course, you'll see them when I pull them out of the package. Oh yeah, these are the. These look like these might be the legs. A lot of styrofoam. Tail's getting a little wobbly. A, wobbly, blah, blah, blah. a little wobbly. And this looks like the uh, tilt support. It's got the little handle right there. And there's one more piece I can't seem to make out. Kind of a circular piece right here, which is probably, I could guess, is the um, center piece that holds the rod from the bottom of the chair base and up. You kind of see like a little circle there. There we go. <laughs> kind of think of it, I probably should have unbubbled it before I put it on the table. <laughs> So I'm gonna do that right now.
Not the most glamorous setup, but it'll have to do. All right, I guess the first thing we should start with is the base. I'm not sure exactly how that goes together. I think it looks pretty simple, but just in case, I'm gonna look at the instructions for just a moment. All right, it already wants us to put the caster uh, um, legs onto the, the center base right here, which is gonna be that guy. Oh, oh there goes the center piece that came out. Ah, actually, it's very flimsy. Kind of a cheap plastic, if you ask me. So let's see what we can do with this. Slips over just like that, huh? All right. Yeah, looks pretty simple. Oh, you do use a screw to uh, tighten that, which I should have inside this right here. According to the instructions, we're gonna need N and F. N is the screw we're gonna need. This is uh, F, this uh, star bracket here. Oh, I see, assemble the F kit with screws N, install gas cylinder E while G. <laughs> A goes to B, the C leads to D. <sighs> All right, so let's get the end screws out of there. There they are, right there. This is only one I didn't open just yet because I don't know what letter is what. I mean, I suppose I can put it on a paper and then mark it, but it seems like the simpler choice at the moment. Work smarter, not harder. Harder. Work smarter, not harder. All right, so I got those screws out, so I'm gonna continue on uh, getting these put on here. I'm gonna tighten them on there. Just make sure you don't push it too far because then you might have a little trouble getting them in there. So I pushed this one a little too far. So I'm gonna back it out just a little bit. Wow, <laughs> once it's in there, it's in there. I should get my little tool out. So I'm gonna screw these in here in a moment. So yeah, that's the first mistake I made to not try to push them in all the way. So this actually includes an Allen wrench. too far still. Oh, got it out. Okay. Just enough. There we go. Perfect. See, now the whole line's right up. This actually is very convenient when they include the, the tools and the, the packages. I mean, I mean, companies have been doing that for a long time. But it's always nice to show that they care. Oop. Probably should use my own little, my little, little, probably should use my own little multi-tool electric screwdriver. Easier than that. Let me go get that. Be right back. Got my own little Black and Decker uh, automatic drill, and I got a little hexagon Allen wrench set right there from Pro Torque. All I gotta do is find the right one. It's probably H5 because it looks like all of these screws are all. Hex, it's good to have one of these. Be a lot, take a long time with that Allen wrench that's there, but still good to have. Yep, H5. The power! 
Let's continue to put on these little leg casters. You want to turn it around so that you can make sure you follow where the hole is. About there. Perfect. About five legs, okay. Got about three more here. So I saw you guys liked my cabinet from Ikea, but I couldn't, um, I appreciate that, thank you. Not that I don't believe it, as it's like, wow, thank you, I appreciate that, guys. Maybe we could do more of those, I don't know. So yeah, it's been a long, long road. Sorry I haven't made any videos in a while. I've been trying to uh, work some things out with the living situation, but we're getting there, guys. One more. This is actually pretty simple. You know, everything goes on one way, and that's a good thing because you don't want to put these in upside down, then the wheels will go up. And voila! We got our star. All right. Put this over somewhere for a second. All right, so let's move this out of the way. This is probably not ideal. Things are gonna fall when they need to. <laughs> okay, now it wants us to do the uh, armrests. Actually, no, we need to put the pole onto the base. You know, I might. Uh, show those instructions on the screen so that you guys can see it better. I know it's not easy to see on the camera, unfortunately. All right, so let's get our, our rod. Actually, let's uh, move some of this off the table for a second. I need the full. I know I'm you're doing this on a tempered glass table. So I'm gonna put the rod in first, because if I put the wheels on before that, it's gonna move around, so I'm going to try to avoid that. Goes in like so. That's not right, just went right through it. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put this on top, according to instructions. Don't quite understand because when I do this, oh, because it needs to be pushed in all the way. Maybe? Oh, maybe that's why I gotta put the wheels in first. This has gotta be kind of levitated. Yeah, it's already hitting, almost hitting the bottom there. Okay, so let's put the cylinder in the center. Just kind of push a little, put a little pressure there. Not to put it on the top of the. I have to put it on a table because if I do that, I might crack it. Kind of give it like a little twist. It feels like it's in there pretty good. Just like that, see? All right, so now let's put the wheels on. Not wheels on the bus go round, round, round. Oh, the hell just fell. So these you just kind of just push in. Not too hard though, but push them in all the way. Oh. Pretty good click, look at that. That's so easy. Except for that guy. He's like, no, you can't make me. I'm not like the others. There we go. 
Perfect. Now we can, uh-oh, losing pieces here. All right, so we're done with the wheelbase for now. Let's see if we can uh, get the, the bottom of the chair on the ground there. And now I'm gonna grab this out of the way because it's just in the way. All right, so let's attach the arms to the seat cushion. All right, it looks like we're gonna need like six, six screws. There's three on each side. All right, so we're gonna use the L and M screws. These two right here. The real long ones are going to go in the side there. All right, let's get our two arms. All right, so this might be a little more difficult because I have to have it to where, if I'm gonna seat it on the top of the table like this, I have to have it off the side like that. Yeah, it looks like you can adjust them inward or outward. Probably as outward as I can get it. There's a better angle for you. <laughs> I lost my screwdriver. Keep them kind of like right in the center. It's kind of moves on its own, huh? I'm sure the instruction doesn't say to use a drill, but I mean, I haven't seen so far. It's not good to over tighten it with a drill, but I've been experienced with it. And I have a good idea how tight I should go with it. Okay, let's get one of our shorter screws. Plug that in. That's good enough, right? <laughs> that works. Let's do the other side. This is going on. This is going pretty nicely. It's been an easy setup so far. So one thing I noticed, you can't see it, but there's an R right there and an L on the other arm to let you know which side you're supposed to be on, um, which arm goes on which side because they can actually be adjustable in the future to move forward and back. Um, good thing I got that right the first time. <laughs> And also you see it says front right up here. I'm gonna redo that one. I generally don't like having arms on my chair because when you're trying to push them underneath the desk or if you wanna go higher with a chair, you really can't. But I'm gonna give it a shot this time, see how that works out. Try to get this close to the edge as I can. Oh, actually, I have to go about, right about there. Sorry if my hand was in the way. Last screw for the arms. Oops. Power is running low on this. Should probably go charge it. <laughs> All right, it's starting to look like a chair already. Should be.
be able to slide forward, I think. Or they don't slide forward, okay. That's all right. At least they swivel, right? <laughs> all right, so now we gotta attach the, uh, the tilt bracket. It's probably gonna be this thing, which I haven't opened yet. It allows us to adjust the chair to go higher or lower. And it also gives us the ability to tilt the chair forward, you know, straight, you know, upright position, or you want to lean back. I'm not sure if it locks in place, though. Guess we'll find out. I don't know why my Canon camera has to turn off at a certain time after recording. Apparently, that's a rule that DL, uh, DLXLR cameras, I think it is. We only have a maximum recording of 30 minutes. <laughs> All right, I've got to turn this over again. So let me put this down for a second. Let's flip this over. All right, this is gonna be just a tad difficult to get a good shot on this. Maybe that's not too bad. Okay, for this we need K screws. Oh, we need K and I, got it. So the case screws go kind of like in the center, right where these are. So we're gonna start with the eye screws because we need to be able to hold it to where it needs to be before we do the other ones. Because the case screw is gonna hold the back uh, cushion. All right, let's get our K and I screws out. At least these are easy to pull out of here. Not much um, you need to do. No cardboard cutter necessary. All right, so the front knob goes like that. Get our eye screws. Oh, I'm gonna need my drill. All right, got my eye screws. Gonna see if we can drill that in there without dropping it. Hopefully. Just get it in their partial way there. So I can grab the other screw and put that in to hold it up for me. Easier if I just Try to make it easy for everyone, especially for me, right? <laughs> there we go. Hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you like it, please hit that like button. If not, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> star pattern there we go. it's always good to go into a star pattern so that way everything screws in evenly kind of something I picked up when I was working at auto the auto mechanic shops all right those are in not quite nicely all right so I think the next thing to do okay so it wants us to attach the backrest and the headrest and the seat cushion all together at once before placing it on top of the wheelbase. All right, so let's do that. Uh, very carefully turn this on its front. Probably turn it around here so I can get to it easier that way. I mean, I'm a little indifferent about the instructions. I'd rather attach the seat cushion onto the wheelbase, but I'm just gonna see where this goes. Maybe it is easier to do it this way. We learn something new every day, right? Try to lift this up a little bit. I don't know if there's much lighting here, but it actually just slides in right here. Give you a better look at it. It has these little tracks right here. There's tracks right here as well. It just slides in that way. Like so. All right, so we're gonna try to carefully tilt this forward without breaking much of anything. All 
right. Move that out of the way. Grab our screws. All right, so we got our, uh, I believe it's the K screws to actually bolt on the back plate here, the back cushion. Looks like we just might have enough juice. Get those screwed in. I might even tap it with the Allen wrench just to make sure. because I know the drill's running a little low. There we go. <laughs> I don't think I need that anymore, but just in case. <laughs> All right, let's get it attached to our wheelbase. Man, it looks like it glides on the vinyl floor just smoothly, look at that. I like that. Nothing much you have to do to fasten this. Just push down on top of the pipe and it should lock into place. And sometimes you even have to sit in it just to make sure it's fastened correctly. There we go. I can already feel it. Oh. All right. All right, so one more piece I neglected to put on there is I want to have the headrest as well. Where did I put that? Where did I do with that? Okay, We've got two holes right here. And for those screws, and those screws will be the J screws. These right here are just spare parts. That's what those, T2. Pre-tightened. Which is not very easy to do because they're kind of deep socket. Get one on there at least. There we go. Just a pre-drill so I can get the other one in. It's very simple. It takes hardly no effort at all. I'm actually quite pleased how easy this install is. And there you have it. And now for the final piece. This should help cover the screws in the back. Is done, donezo. Oh, I can't wait to have a seat again. Oh, yes. <sighs> Perfect. Uh, so you get a full back support there. And I believe this is adjustable. Now, very high, unfortunately. Maybe I don't need the headrest, but I'll give it a try before I make a final decision. Oh yeah, and there's also a lumbar adjuster, which I think is already installed in the back. Yeah, depending on your height, where you might want this. I'm not sure, I'll, I don't think I'll be using it that often. I think I got where I need to be, actually. Once it's like a one-time set and you're good to go. Yeah.
And there you have it. Building this chair was an easy success. Now, the reason why I went with this chair instead of a gaming chair was because, let's face it, gaming chairs are ridiculously overpriced. And I'm really going for comfort here, not so much um, aesthetics. So, that being said, at the time of this recording, you can find this chair on Amazon.com for $109.99 with the included coupon. Thank you everyone for watching this episode on how to build a car access computer chair. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.